like this, and you're hanging on Pepe and uh, Ronaldo to get you this. So that's your heart of and it's very ridiculous. And I'm sure it's also affecting the mood in camp. But the players will not say it. Maybe not a lot of these things that you hear those things. Yeah, that's that's uh, my take on the you game. Know, I, yeah. I don't know. He's 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 ability to read the game. He's second to none. I don't. Mm. Uh, I don't know there is a reason why City never loses a game that he played on. I think that's the only lost one game that he played in, which was yeah. the FA Cup final. Uh, uh, and the, and it's crazy because he, he, for me he also signifies and 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 signifies shows me the simplicity of football, the beauty of of simplicity in football. Yeah, he 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 might have his his teammates for ten years, five years, two years from him. He still touches that ball. Really had a solid team. I haven't said that. Let's talk about Germany. Germany, I know they are hosts. Before the tournament, of course, they are always going to be in the favorite list. But they have, they, Germany has at performed all expectations coming to the tournament. I don't know if you agree with me on that. I, I think they have. I mean, build up to the tournament, no one lasted uh, Germany win a proper game. They've been losing and losing and playing really badly. But man, in this tournament, they played so well, right? They match Spain pass for pass, movement for movement today, producing one of the best games we've, we've seen in recent times uh, at, at this level. So yes, you know they, they they are getting better and better. If they had gone past Spain, I would have put my money on it that they will win this series because of you know because of the the level of growth I've seen game to game. You know, you can see that they are getting it together. You can see that the, all the ingredients are working. Like, uh, you know, they bring him, they brought him Fl Florian Brice today that had been rested for a while and he started cooking. So yeah, um, I'm I'm happy for 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 what's his name, the Nagosman. I think that he's a brilliant coach. Now my respect for that young man has gone has up up a notch. Yes, yes, yes. You can see that it was both boardroom politics and stuff that made him start yes. him at Bayern. In the crew, and the general yes. was a good word because he came there with on a very high reputation as well, based on what he did in mm. uh, was it Dortmund Life uh, Albi Leipzig, and he came to Dortmund, mm. a boardroom politics yeah. and stuff to start fooling the crew together. And uh, he, like you said, he has used the tournament to revive his reputation, and I'm sure if he doesn't want to continue with Germany, there are going to be clubs out there uh, that want to. Hire him. Chelsea and Manchester United will be biting their, their, their fingers now, missing out on that young man. And uh, when these features came out, I was so gutted that either of these teams was going to live at this stage. Because the tournament is out yes. to have yes. both of them at this up to the semi finals. For them to live yes. at the quarter finals, I mean, this is not this is a service to the tournament, honestly. Because I don't know who's going to give all this quality again in this tournament. And I will go from these two guys today. I'm wanting that way for our viewers. Like, uh, if you don't forget that we we'll just launched our website, dancetv.com. It's going to be on the on the description uh, section. And why I mentioned that there is an article there that we wrote that was written about Germany. The reason why what they have uh, above other teams that what Nagusma has managed to do with that team. The way he has created comfort for the players by using them exactly the way they have been thriving in their clubs. And that's the talking point. We saw that today as well. People like Kimmich were very comfortable. They played exactly the same way they played for Bayern. Uh, Kai Havertz, who we're going to talk about right now, played very comfortably for the tournament because he did the same role that he plays for Arsenal in the, during the season. And so many other players, uh, Sane, all of them were used exactly the same way that they have they are functioning for their for their clubs. I know you, you, for Germany, I want to talk about Kimmich and the Kai Havas. Kai Havas first. Hey, if you was on him. Kai Havas really impressed me. Uh, he's taking his game to the next level. Next level where he has gained confidence to show that he can be the main man. I mean he can run the front line and when there's a need to bring in a more direct uh, probably more forceful, aggressive forward. You can bring that in, and he will still be in the side 
I see great opportunities for that person. You know, uh, the only uh, thing that made him not quite as effective for Germany was, I think that more, for most of the time, he wasn't, uh, chances were not created for him he in made the 18 yard box. Yes, he made exactly. He made more of the chances than for people to create for him. And so in, in those cases, he was either tightly marked or not in the best position to, you know, really finish those chances off. But apart from that, I was impressed with his mobility, his movement, his, uh, you know, consistency, tactical awareness, running into space all the time, opening up uh, teams, laying the ball off. And then most importantly, again, you know, I'm a fan of the simplicity of football. Kai Havas keeps it simple. He never complicates anything. He never tries to do too much. He does the basic thing that helps the game move forward. <clears throat> You're mute. You're mute. A lot of people will go against him that he missed chances. Like Riley said, most of the chances that he missed, they are chances that somehow he personally manufactured. And you know, sometimes when you do stuff like that, it's a little, a little uh, difficult to to combat because uh, because. Uh, you have to adjust your body, maneuver, and stuff like that. Though there are one or two that he missed, which is the only place I think Havas will need to work on this uh, this summer for next season. He needs to start big things because at least if you see three chances, be able to combine at least one. If you see five, let three go in. You know, he can he can have five chances and score just one if he really wants to strive in that position. He had a very very good game. Was present, like you said, he didn't shy away from duels. You know, was there physically, but it was a very physical game today. But what really impressed me most about Kahavas today was his ability to find space in this very, very, very tight and intense game. He always managed to find space and receive the ball at half -term and almost, you know, made, uh, did damage to, to Spain today. Yeah, Kahavas, uh, I don't want to, I don't know if I want to give credit to, to Ateta or to him as a, as a person. And I think, I believe it should be for both of them. I think I did a good job of believing in him, giving him confidence. But I have us again, show strong mentality because he faced a lot of criticism when he arrived at us now. And he grew as the day went by. And he has carried that into uh, the national team and the German national team is enjoying it. Kimmich is another player that last season in Bayern, he looked like it was all looking like he was high. Everybody knew he was a good player, but it looked like he was being overhyped. But watching him in the tournament, and especially today, what a player. What a player. He, you know, and then he, uh, compare him to uh, Kunde. He's a player we're going to talk about. I look at Kunde, I'm like, defensively, he's a solid player, but I don't think he's, he's good on the ball. Or, you know, that he, at the level at which the noise I hear about him. Kimmich today should give all round performance. Defensively, he was solid. On the ball, he put pressure on Spain a lot of time. The quality of the balls that he was moving forward and dropping in the, in the ball. I don't know what you made about Kimmich today. Very impressive player. You've said it all. Um, able to go up and down, makes uh, uh, smart decisions, and is a born leader. Passionate about the game mature player, you know, able to tactically adjust as the game goes forward, communicates a lot with his teammates. You could see that when um, the captain left for Germany, he took over the captainship and, and still kept playing and keep, kept doing his thing up until the final whistle. He's a guy that I read very highly. They, he's 29 and there's a skepticism about buying uh, Joshua Kimmich at this time, but this is the kind of player that would be like the likes of Cristiano and the likes of uh, Modric. He, he, the way he plays and the way he handles himself, he could easily play to 38, 39 and still give you, you know, top quality, you know, soccer. So, yes, he, he's a guy that I rate very highly. And I totally love him. I wish uh, my club Arsenal could go for him. You're, you're on mute. You're on mute. You, you basically took those words from my mouth. There's a strong link that uh, is linked to Arsenal. He's willing to, he's open to joining Arsenal. I pray that uh, that comes to pass. 
But those are the kind of signs that Arsenal needs now. And that reminds me, uh, we need to be, be, be you, uh, Chum and uh, uh, Nimi. I'm trying to you know, just come together and look at some of these transfer rumors and deals that have been done. Maybe this weekend or any early next week. There have been so so many interesting uh, transfer links and deals. Chelsea at it again this summer. Let's uh, analyze some of those uh, stuff as they as they come. I'll, I'll, I'll talk with you on that. Portugal, zero. France, zero. Coming into this one, I wasn't... I didn't expect much in terms of quality because of what we have seen so far. I just had a little percentage uh, expectation and maybe from now, these two teams probably will kick on to give us what we've been expecting from them to give us all through the tournament, but again, I wasn't impressed. The fans kind of stepped it up a little bit in this game, but not not as good as what we saw with, you know between Spain and Germany. I don't know what you made of the, you know, that game. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. I thought they they, they played uh, you know as almost as well. I know uh, Spain versus Germany was a top shelf uh, game. I thought these guys also none of them. None of the teams was conservative or, or, or cautious. I think they still played, though defensively sound, they, they still played with a lot of fluidity, a lot of intensity, um, a lot of passion. They gave it their all, or both teams. France, of course, we know a very pragmatic side, you know, played more of securing themselves from the back and then building on Kylian Mbappe to move forward. They did that, tried and tried and tried, and Bappe wasn't quite at his best. I think that that injury yeah, in his yeah, nose yeah, yeah, really, really, really affected him. Yes, I saw that from the way he was playing. And then um, not starting Dembele, uh, you know, reduced the effectiveness from the wings. Yeah, going forward, they started to look more. And who is, though, though he's a good player, just doesn't have that level of um, quality. You know, uh, pace and quality to hard the opening like Dembele does. And then when Dembele came in, you see the difference. Ended up winning the man of the match. So I thought it was a good game. Portugal on their side, their coaching, their coach did not set up that team well to utilize all the tools he had at his disposal. Kept uh, clinging on to Cristiano Ronaldo. I can't imagine Ronaldo playing 120 minutes, <laughs> you know. Uh, at his age, against teams that look, if he was in a rich scoring form, you see, you know, he, he, there's a reason for it. But he's not scored a goal for the Portugal in a while, and and even in the tournament, he hasn't been playing well. You could see that any little thing that he did, the coach will celebrate, and uh, the rest of them will celebrate, and it was as if they were carry, carrying, yeah, carrying someone, <clears throat> willing the person to do something the person is not able to do. Anymore, so <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, that's turned out to hurt uh, in, uh, uh, Portugal. And this is the same thing that Roberto Martinez did when he was handling Belgium. You know, we're seeing the repeat of that, and I hope the Portuguese uh, use their like uh, Ebos will say in Nigeria, they use their tongue and, and count their teeth on time. Let's get rid of him right quick. Yeah, I'm, I'm bang on with you on this one. Ronaldo, for me, even if he's not going to retire, even if he's going to play the tournament, he shouldn't be playing 120 minutes. He, there's no no chance. He shouldn't even be starting games. The, the, the people say age is just a number. Age is not just a number. You could see that he had the willing, he had the mindset, he had the mentality, he had the he, he wants to do it. But at some point, he, there's a limit to what he can, your body can he can carry, and he was forcing it and forcing it. Couldn't just walk. The Portuguese the, the team lacked bite. You know, there was no bites. Most of the team was coming from the wing for Lau. Lau is just a young man. Sometimes they are playing from the wing. They're looking for a point man to, you know, that can help you hold up the ball and stretch the opponent's defense a little bit and bring people on. You want to lack those, that, that, that energy this time around because of his age. And it was a problem for, for Portugal. But unfortunately, like you said, the coach kept him there and kept shoving everybody around him. Except him, and that was the focal point. Was the problem was Portugal had no strength in the middle of the attack. Everything was coming from the wings, and you know it was it was for me it was it was an issue for for them. 
and I hope that he will retire after this game so that they can build this uh, this squad of players now who just evaporate like that. By the time they're ready for World Cup three years' time, Rando should not be there. They, they don't have a new team, including Pepe. Pepe, yeah. too. They, Pepe, too. People say, yeah, he, he, this is strong. But you could see he, after all each, each chase, he bends over, he's breathing hard. Uh, you know, those things, those, those small fine matches at this level are very huge and they affect what you, the result that you get out from. You can have a, a, a team that's spotted like this and you're hanging on Pepe and uh, Ronaldo to get you results. That's a hard of and it's very ridiculous. And I'm sure it's also affecting the mood in camp. But the players will not say it until maybe when a lot of these things start to hear those things. Yeah, that's, that's uh, my take on the game. Yeah, but, yeah please, can, can I just add that I saw Mr. Consecaro, the Porto coach, on the bed, uh, in the crowd. Portugal will do themselves a good service by bringing that guy on, letting go of Martinez. That guy with the national team will has the potential to win trophies for them. Yeah, yeah. No matter Martinez, uh, no, no. A, a few times I've watched him, I've watched him as a pundit. He, he, he speaks well, but as a coach, man, he hasn't delivered. He, he doesn't have the track record. There's nothing to, there's nothing. I don't know. I don't know how he got that job. And okay, fine. He's done, gotten the job. Whoever that hired him, it should be, it should, you know, have seen what he has done or what his antecedents are, or what he can deliver. And in the move to, like you rightly mentioned, there are coaches out there that can do this job. I don't think Roberto Martinez is good enough for to coach this player. They have they have the quality and they, they need to get rid of him as quickly as possible and get somebody that is right that can, you know, give give their fans what they deserve. Look at the kind of football that Germany and Spain play today. That's what that's what Portugal should be doing. You know, and uh I believe they, I hope they will do so. Like I, like I said, uh, don't forget to check out our, our website, transitv.com. It's the right in the comment section. And uh, check out the articles. We have articles on the Copa America. We have on the Euros. And uh, oh, if you have any to contribute as well, if writing is your hobby, don't forget uh, or fail to reach out. And uh, we can talk to you about that. This evening, we'll, we'll switch on the next one hour or two on to the Copa America, the first quarter finals was played yesterday. Messi uh, survived the uh, scare from the penalty shootout against Colombia, uh, Ecuador. Today, Canada will be playing against uh, Venezuela. It's going to be an electric game as well. And uh, we'll bring you fillers on that one tomorrow. Well, thanks for stopping by. Do you have anything to add before we go? No, Roger. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. We'll keep, uh, we'll keep going. So we're getting to the end of the two tournaments now, we face the leagues and the, and the friendlies, yes. Exactly, yeah. The VR stay tuned to the channel. We're going to be at LA in two or three weeks' time. As now play Manchester United and uh, in Chicago, uh, New Madrid will be playing against Inter Milan. We'll turn the TV, we'll be at those those games. I will bring you uh, live uh, and uh, real content from those uh, those stadium as the games come and go. Thank you and uh, ciao. Yes.